Well, good morning. You join me on the river today, and I'm going to be running through my five top tips for fishing salmo hard baits in the winter months. So, if you want to put more fish on the bank using hard baits, then carry on watching. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is talk you through some of my favourite lures in the range and just explain to you sort of when and why I'd use them. And first up is the rattling sting. This is one of my favourite lures from Salmo range and I fish it, I power fish with it basically, I fish quickly with it. Um, it's a quite a versatile lure, it comes in a suspending version which is my favourite and also a deeper diving version. This one's actually floating. So you've got two options there. So you can suspend this one, so you can count it down, jerk it back, you can cover lots of layers of the water with this one. With the deep diving one, you can crank this right down to the bottom, jerk it, let it float up, and then jerk it down again and let it float up. So you've got two different types of presentation with, with, one, with one pattern of lure there. So next up is probably one of the most famous lures in the Salmo range, and that's the Hornet. So first up, you've got the standard Hornet and that's available in sinking and a floating version. So depending on the presentation you want to, you want to achieve, you've got one that will crank down and float back up, or you've got one that will, on the pause, just slowly sink. Then you've got my favourite, which is the rattling hornet. Nice loud rattle in there. So the rattling hornet, I like fishing when the perch are having it, the, there's bait fish about, um, you're chucking lures around bait fish, things like that, and I think that rattle just makes that lure stand out from the crowd. So the next two lures I've got, um, I like to use in slightly shallower water or when I'm fishing higher up in the water. And the first one of them is the butcher. Caught me loads of fish in the past and something that I've got really a lot of confidence in. There's a sinking version and a floating version. So again, you can vary the retrieve, you can count it down or you can let it float back up. The other shallow lure that I like is the executor, mainly in the seven centimetre version because I think it's the nice, nice size for perch fishing. Um, this one doesn't, you know, this is a floating lure, so you just crank it down, let it pause, let it come up. Um, yeah, and that's great for when you're fishing like three, four foot of water. And last but not least, probably one of the oldest lures in the, uh, in the Salmo range, and that's the minnow. Again, available in lots of different sizes. I personally like the seven centimetre version because it just suits the, the, the perch that we're fishing for in the UK. Sinking and floating version, so you can vary that retrieve, um, switch it up a little bit. There have been certain days when I've watched perch chase lures and a floating lure will go in and, and on the pause as it floats they'll ignore it. Put a sinking lure on and as it sinks they nail it. So there's definitely something in that, depends on how the perch are feeding. So I know with these lures that I've got in front of me, I've got sinking, suspending and floating in a couple of different profile shapes, longer profiles, shorter profiles. That covers me for everything that I'm going to do in my fishing. So tip number two is the colour of your lures. And I can't stand here and tell you what's best for your rivers on any given day, because there isn't, you know, it just varies all the time. But what I will say is there's a few little things I look for that give me an idea of what I'm gonna start with. So when the water's clear, which a lot of my rivers are clear a lot of the time, I'll go for natural colours. So by natural colours, I'm talking silvers, browns, more sort of toned down colours. This will be my starting point. However, if the river's coloured or um, light is fading, I'll definitely switch up and put some brighter colours on or something maybe in between. So two of my favourite colours for clear water are these two here. We've got holographic silver, bait fish, and we've got a natural perch. Like I said, slightly toned down, uh, muted down colours that replicate something that's quite natural to the river. And when the water's coloured, there's a couple of options that I really like to use. And that's this black option and this bright option. Like I said, by switching between these lures, you can normally work out a pattern, find out what's working for you. Another couple of colours that I've got my hands on recently are these two new ones here. So we've got the Olive Hotspot and the UV Purple. Nice white background on the Olive Hotspot with a bit of, bit of greeny sort of chartreuse on there um, and an olive back on it. Yeah, really nice looking lure that I'm sure that is going to work wonders for the perch. And the UV purple, a bit unusual looking, but I like that. I like using lures that people wouldn't normally buy as such. You know, I like using the ones that are a little bit, a little bit different. I think it tricks the fish into, into maybe biting. And I touched on it before, but that moment just before dark, just as the light's failing, I like to use bright colours. 
So you've been you've been fishing natural colours all day, you've not had a lot of luck. Just as the light's starting to fade, I like to switch to these bright colours just to try and try and trigger some fish in to feed him. So there's a little guide to how I fish different coloured waters and which colour lures I use. But to be quite honest, the biggest tip I can give you is to always, always carry a selection of lures around with you. So have a few bright colours, a few natural colours and something maybe in between. And by switching, switching up, changing around, you're always going to find something that's going to work. Okay, so tip number three is all about the retrieve. And in my opinion, one of the most important aspects of hard bait fishing. So I've chosen three of my favorite lures and I'm gonna show you how I retrieve them. So the first one is the rattling hornet. Now this is a floating hornet, it's five and a half centimeters. Um, and this is one of my favorite hornets in the range. Right, so we'll cast that out. And as soon as it's hit the, hit the water, I'm gonna crank that down until there, we just touched bottom there, the, vibra the vibration just stopped on the tip and I'm going to let that float up a foot and then just give it another little wind. Let it float up, give it a little wind. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to be working around a foot, foot and a half off the bottom because as that lure floats you're going to pull it back down again. Then it'll float up again, then it'll pull it back down again. That way you can, uh, you can fish quite close to the bottom and keep it in that kill zone and nine times out of ten the bites will be on the paws. Just as it's lifting off off the bottom, that's when the perch hit it. Right, next up is the rattling sting. One of my personal favourites, and one that I like to fish quite aggressively. So the rattling sting is suspending, meaning it'll just suspend in the water after a twitch. Like I said, I like to fish this quite aggressively. Um, you know, if there's fish about, and maybe um, if they're not feeding, you can almost stir them into feeding. You know, they, they see all that activity and they just want to feed. So I'll cast it out and I'll literally give it sharp pulls on the rod. Two at a time sometimes, just vary it up, mix it up, big pulls and that lure, as you pull that lure, it's going through the water like this and um, then you're letting it pause. A couple of big sharp pulls and then let it pause. Sharp pull, let it pause. Sharp pull, let it pause. And sometimes if them fish are laying up dormant, I think that aggressive retrieve can really stir them into feeding. And last but not least, the butcher. This is the sinking butcher, and this is, like I said before, one of my favourites for sort of slightly shallower water. Um, the other great thing about these little butchers is they're quite slim line and quite heavy, so they cast a long way and very accurate too. So we'll cast that out. And we're just going to give it a couple of wines just to get it down, then we can let that sink. So I might count to three, for instance, like one, two, three, and when I know that's gone down, I can then start the retrieve. And the retrieve for this, I'm just going to give it a couple of winds and let it pause. A couple of winds, let it pause. Now, like I said before, it's a slightly more subtle action than the Hornet. It's got a tighter wobble. Um, there's no rattle in it as well, which is quite important. And I think just when, when the fish are feeling a bit pressured sometimes, it can, it can work really well. Right, so that's how I like to retrieve hard baits. That works for me, it might not work for you, but the important thing is to get out of there, experiment with your retrieve, slow it down, speed it up, be aggressive, you know, and just see what works for you. Right, so tip number four is all about the correct rods to use. And yes, I know, most rods, or any rod in fact, will cast them and retrieve them. However, having the right rod allows those lures to work exactly as they're designed to. So the two rods I've got here are perfect for what I use. These cover me for all of my hard bait fishing for perch and light pike. So that's the Hornet Pro Finesse, which is a three to 14 gram casting weight. And I use this for my lightweight cranks Hornets, all that sort of thing, butchers, um, the smaller executors, those type of lures. 
And for the slightly bigger stuff, like the rattling stings, the bigger hornets and stuff like that, I use the Pro Lite, which is a five to 20 gram casting weight. Now, the main reason I use these rods is the tip. They're powerful butts, but the tip action is soft. And what that does is that allows the lure to work exactly as they're designed for. Right, so you've got a lure that wobbles side to side. Now, if you fish that with braid, with no stretch in it, and a stiff rod, what that rod is actually gonna do is gonna numb the action of the lure. It's gonna prevent it from wobbling how it should. So like I said, these rods aren't essential, but I believe they're a massive edge to making these lures work exactly as they're designed to. And the bonus of having a rod designed for, for fishing these hard baits is that it's always set up. And if it's always set up, you're gonna be more inclined to cast it around if you are out on the bank. Okay, so my last and final tip, tip number five, is all about the, my braid and trace setup. So you may have noticed that I'm using a bright braid and you're thinking to yourself, why would you want bright braid? Well, for crankbait fishing, when, when you've got a slack, slack line to your, to your lure, I often watch the braid in the water and you can see it flick before you actually feel it on the rod. So, so although I'll keep my finger on the blank and I'll be, I'll be feeling for a bite, I'll also be watching the braid when it goes in the water because you can't always keep a tight line to your lure as it's rising or sinking. So you're just looking for that braid and what you're looking for is a little flick in the braid and very often that's the bite. So at the business end, on my lighter setup, I've got a 10 pound soft wire trace. Um, I'll always use a wire trace with with crankbaits and anything that's got trebles on it. Um, you just, you know, you don't know what you're going to catch so it's just safer to use a wire trace. So on the other setup, the slightly heavier setup, where I'm going to be fishing the rattling sting, I've gone for a slightly different trace on that, and that's uh, single strand titanium. I made it up myself, um, 20 pound, and the reason I use a solid strand titanium, the single strand, is because it's stiff. And what that does, it keeps your main line away from the lure. So if you're jerking it back and it comes, it comes back on itself, if you like, I know that stiff trace is pushing my main line away from it. And then in between, my bright braid, and the wire trace, I've got about three, four foot of 10 pound fluorocarbon. That gives me a little bit of a cushion. Um, it gives me something soft to hold on to if I, want to, if I have to grab the line when I've got a fish on, if I'm chinning a pike out or anything like that. And it also just adds that little bit of invisibility between the trace and the braid, which is quite bright, obviously. So that's how I set that up. Okay, so that's my five top tips for fishing salmo lures in the winter months. Don't let that ice and snow, if it ever comes, put you off fishing crankbaits, because I can tell you now that they are deadly in the cold conditions. And don't forget to smash that like button if you like this video, and subscribe to the Salmo YouTube channel, where you'll see loads more videos like this coming up soon.